So the goal of our analysis was to approach the real toll that the first wave of coronavirus had in Europe. We wanted to do it at a regional level. Um, and the way that we did this was by measuring excess deaths, which is another way of saying how much higher deaths are compared to their usual level. And then to share these findings, we produced 500 local news articles, which was one for every region across 20 European countries. And these were produced automatically using our homemade robot writer, which is able to generate text from data. And this meant that we were really able to zoom in. Uh, we were able to show readers what the situation looked like where they live. Uh, we could answer questions like, how, much, how many more deaths than usual have there been where you live? Um, what regions in your country were worst affected? What regions were not affected at all? Um, and really be able to give a local perspective to the pandemic, which was important to us. So it was a situation where we knew people were both very anxious, they were very keen for, in, uh, for information, understandably so. Uh, so the question of how best to report figures responsibly uh, weighed even heavier than usual, I would say, and of trying to provide the most accurate analysis of the situation. Um, and we were all learning as we went along, of course. Um, in March 2020, we're all looking at case figures, which of course were not comparable because of differences in testing across countries. Um, so we started looking at coronavirus deaths, but actually these are also very hard to compare across countries because the definition of what a coronavirus death is actually varies so much. Um, so that's why we actually finally settled on trying to capture the true toll in every region by measuring excess deaths. And this isn't a perfect measure either. Um, for one, there's a big lag in reporting um, so you have to wait weeks or sometimes even months to get accurate figures. Another problem is that only some countries actually publish these figures, so you don't get a complete picture. But I would say that excess deaths is the most comparable figure that we have available to us. We started off by using open data on weekly deaths from Eurostat. And now this has been a really fantastic resource uh, from the very start of the pandemic and they've been adding more regions and countries throughout the year. Um, so from there, we went out to try to fill as many gaps in the data as possible by manually gathering figures um, from national statistics agencies. So we did this for Spain, we did it for the Netherlands, uh, the UK and Germany, for instance. And then the, tip, the data typically contained figures on the number of deaths that occurred every week. Uh, but what we really wanted was to be able to see how that compared to a more normal time period. Um, so our next step was to work out the average weekly number of deaths for each region for the years 2015 to 2019, and then compare that against the 2020 figure. So there were two things that immediately leapt out at us when we looked at the data. Uh, first of all, uh, how much of the excess deaths in the first wave were concentrated to a small number of very hard hit regions. Um, so Bergamo, for instance, had deaths that were many times higher than usual during the spring of 2020. And in fact, when we looked at the data, we found that the 50 worst hit regions accounted for half of all excess deaths. Meanwhile, the other side of this was that a large proportion of regions had no excess deaths at all in the spring wave. Um, nearly half of the regions that we looked at actually had deaths that were more or less at normal levels. Um, mostly this was in Eastern Europe, which was largely spared um, in the first coronavirus wave. But even in countries that were much harder hit, like Spain or Italy or Sweden, there were considerable parts of the country that had no excess deaths. So even within one country, it's very regionally concentrated. We really wanted to tell a local story. Uh, from the very start of the pandemic, there was this instant flood of statistics and comparisons made between countries. Um, but these comparisons, they don't tell the whole story and they can even be misleading because we know that the spread of the pandemic is regional and not national. There were huge differences between regions within the same country. And this was something we really wanted to bring home. And I think that this is actually a very powerful thing with data journalism. It has the potential to take a complex topic and bring it so much closer to home. 
um, instead of just describing this big global phenomenon, you can also show the specific situation where the reader is. You can answer the question, well, what does the situation look like uh, where I am? What's the story for me? And sort of combine that with the broader context. And this makes the story that you're telling so much more relevant and engaging and, and memorable, ultimately.